This is the DJI RS4 Pro. There are a lot of new features to cover, like the new joystick functions, the new native vertical shooting modes, and the entire DJI Focus Pro system. This includes the LiDAR, DJI transmission, the new Focus Pro motors, and the new Focus Pro hand unit. There is a lot to dive into here. DJI sent me this to test for about three weeks now, and I'll have a more in-depth video about this gimbal in the future, but for now, this is my first impressions review of the RS4 Pro. First thing, native vertical shooting. You don't have to remove your camera from the plate to switch from horizontal to vertical shooting anymore. Now you can detach the plate itself and reinstall it vertically. It's as simple as loosening a lever, pinching to release the locks, turning the camera on the plate, and tightening the knob. This is really convenient if you find yourself shooting a lot of social media content. Um, even though all videos should be horizontal, sometimes you gotta shoot vertical. Both the RS3 Pro and 4 Pro have 10 pound load capacities. However, the RS4 Pro's uh, motors have 20% more torque. Whenever I hear 20% more torque, I always think where is that 20% coming from? So for this build, I tested my FX3 and FX6 with all the accessories I can put on them, and here were the results. When it came to using the FX6 build on the RS3 Pro, one thing I did notice about this gimbal is whenever I was picking it up and I was going into underslung mode really quickly, or moving the camera around, I would get a red out of balance error on the back of the screen here. And I feel like I was getting that more often than I was on the RS4 Pro. When it comes to using a gimbal, I typically don't use my FX6. I typically reach for my FX3. However, if you have to use a bigger build like this one, the RS3 Pro can do it, but unsurprisingly, the RS4 Pro does it better. I just watched that last clip back and realized how tired I looked. I've been doing a lot of testing with the RS4, RS3, different Sony cameras and cinema lens combinations. So uh, if you're enjoying this content, please like and leave a comment and let me know what you wanna know or see with the RS4 Pro. I have a lot more videos planned in the future. In the very near future, I have a RS4 Pro tips and shortcuts video that after using it for a while, I learned a lot of like little quirky things that you could do to improve your shots. So I'll be releasing that video very soon. Um, but yeah, I just was looking at that clip and was like, man, Delta would charge me 50 bucks for those bags. <laughs> okay, back to the video. The new joystick switch allows you to switch between zoom and gimbal control. So you can now adjust focus and zoom on just the gimbal itself. But you can also switch to gimbal control and still move the gimbal around just as you normally would. If you're not using a zoom motor and you have your Sony camera paired with Bluetooth to the gimbal, the zoom control can actually control the power zoom or the clear image zoom on your Sony camera as well. Pretty cool. The side of the gimbal still has the follow mode switch that you can use just like the RS3 Pro had. I love that feature on the RS3 Pro, so I'm glad it came to the RS4. The front of the gimbal also has uh, two USB ports on the front and one USB port on the back. The USB port on the back is for your camera control cable. For the front two USB-C ports, the top is for the focus motor and the bottom is for the image transmission or LiDAR. Jumping ahead here, but you can also tell the focus motors what you're adjusting here, whether you're adjusting focus, iris, or zoom. And uh, that is more important a little bit later. But this is a nice update over the RS3 Pro because if you wanted to adjust focus and zoom, you had to put each motor in the front two USB-C ports on the RS3 Pro. Then you were unable to use LiDAR or image transmission then. Now you can daisy chain all of the focus, iris, and zoom motors together and still use the bottom slot for the image transmission or LiDAR. There's also a new battery grip for the RS4 Pro that allows up to 29 hours of battery life and it can be used as a USB-C power bank. Uh, this is great if you are adding a lot of accessories to the gimbal. Having more power is always a better thing and I was actually using this when I was powering everything with the RS4 Pro. The RS4 Pro has the automated axis gimbal locks just like the RS3 Pro had, uh, but now there is another feature called fully fold and lock. This is using recenter and lock here. 
There's also a new car stabilization mode. This allows you to calibrate the motors to be a little bit more aggressive and help smooth out those jitters uh, that come along with rigging this out on a car. I'm a big fan of putting gimbals on cars for the smoothest results you can get. Uh, again, more on this later, but this actually might be its own video on its own. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about the DJI RS4 Pro and the Focus Pro system, uh, let's go over a couple of different ways that you can use the gimbal. And the first way, I'm going to actually not use any of this. I'm just going to use the LiDAR and the transmission with the uh, new focus motors. So right now we're using the LiDAR autofocus on the 35 millimeter Vespid. And if I turn on active track, the gimbal should start to track me when I turn left and right here. And this is really helpful if you just wanna put your camera down with a manual lens and have the gimbal do all of the work. However, if you want to turn off active track, we can do so and still have autofocus. And if we wanna turn off autofocus on the LiDAR, we can do so on the DJI Hybrite monitor with the handles. Uh, pressing this back button here will turn on and off the autofocus, so I should no longer be tracked. And using the LiDAR depth map, I can actually find where I am and put myself in focus. So if I move forward on the LiDAR depth map, I will actually see my little blob moving forward. And that is because we're using the control hub with the LiDAR and the DJI transmission. But we can see a LiDAR picture in picture right here. And this is the waveform view. Um, I can't show it to you here because it'll just be out of focus. But the more we move, the more we can see where we are on the LiDAR, we're that little blip right there. So now we know we're in focus. This was really handy whenever I was using this on a car mount because I can remotely control the focus. Well, if we're in, not in autofocus, I can remotely control the focus, uh, turn it back to autofocus, or I can also use these joysticks to adjust the gimbal as well. Up, right, left, and uh, I can recenter it if I double click this. I'm using it backwards, so it'll just show you my house. But I can recenter this, and this is great for a nice uh, standalone remote operation kit. However, if you're operating the gimbal and you have a first AC and they're not really familiar with this style of focusing, uh, they also have the hand unit. And this is the DJI Follow Focus. This is a focus iris and zoom controller and it is a nice wireless package you can also get a bracket and put the high bright monitor on here so if your first ac wants to have just a complete package and not put the monitor on a stand they can do so it is a really strange way to pull focus uh, because you know exactly where you are on the LiDAR depth map. So whenever you pair these devices together, that's when you see the real benefits of the DJI Focus Pro system. The new LiDAR system has increased from a little over 43,000 points to 76,800 ranging points, and you can focus up to 20 meters away. There are two autofocus modes, wide and flex spot. Wide can track people and vehicles, while spot can track just about anything you can draw a box around. When it comes to using LiDAR autofocus with manual focus lenses, uh, it's actually amazing that the LiDAR is able to do such a great job at keeping things in focus, even at low T-stops. I love the look of using cinema lenses on my cameras, but I found myself not using them when I was on my gimbal, when I didn't have a LiDAR system because managing focus is one of the most difficult things for me to do when I'm trying to track my subjects and you know keep them in frame, but also juggle camera settings and managing all the other aspects of the shoot. Keeping things in focus was really kind of difficult and it was the thing that kept me away from using manual lenses. I have a lot of opinions and things I learned when it comes to using the LiDAR rangefinder, so I'm probably gonna make its own video about setting this up and getting the best results with it. Another great benefit of the LiDAR rangefinder is active track, and this actually does a fantastic job at tracking subjects in the frame, but again, getting too close to the camera, if the LiDAR rangefinder can't see you, uh, like if the lens is covering you and you're too close, it is possible that the framing will be off, so again, I found it, if you can get the LiDAR rangefinder to see what your lens sees, you will get the best results here. It's not a perfect set it and forget it solution for all situations. However, after learning its limitations and how to use it properly, the only way I can describe this device is magic. 
it is crazy bringing autofocus to manual focus lenses and being able to use active track. I never thought I would be able to do this. So make sure to subscribe and check back for my LiDAR video whenever that comes out. Another update is the DJI Focus Pro hand unit. It has a focusing wheel, a iris adjustment, and a zoom rocker that can wirelessly control all of these motors. You can also initiate a motor calibration from the hand wheel, adjust the tension of the focus wheel, set A and B points, and start and stop recording all from the Focus Pro hand unit. This also works with the DJI Focus Pro motors without the gimbal at all. So if you don't use the DJI transmission or you don't wanna focus with the handles and you wanna focus with the hand unit, you can control focus, iris, and zoom depending on what the fizz setting on the Focus Pro motor is itself, which is pretty awesome. Which brings us to the DJI Focus Pro motors. These are an all new design over the previous motors with the RS3 Pro. These have a 30% increase in motor speed. Another change over the previous generation of Focus motors these motors now use 15 millimeter rods instead of the 12 millimeter rods that the RS3 and earlier did. And I feel like I had to really tighten uh, the 12 millimeter rods down so the um, motors wouldn't actually come loose if I was moving this too quickly. Uh, with the 15 millimeter rods, I can really torque on these focus motors and I've never had one come loose yet. I'm not gonna do that all the time. They work wirelessly, so you can also use a DTAP to USB-C cable to power one of these motors. And as long as you can daisy chain the other motors together, they'll all get power and be able to be used wirelessly. I have a video coming out going over that whole build, so be sure to subscribe and check back for that video whenever I post it. There are two different image transmission options for the RS4 Pro. The first and more affordable is the Raveneye. If you buy the Pro version, you already have this included in your gimbal setup, so you probably already have this image transmission method available already. It's great for one-man bands and small teams that you just want to see an image and you're close to the camera. You can adjust a few camera settings and reposition the gimbal and activate active track. I used this on a recent shoot and was able to see a feed and control the gimbal from the backseat of the car while the actors were driving. This was quick and convenient, but if I wasn't in the back seat, I would have been out of range for the Raveneye to see the feed of the camera. I have lots of other videos going over the Raveneye that I'll post in a playlist down below. If you need a stronger connection, more control options, and a dedicated monitor, the DJI transmission is a big upgrade, but it is fantastic. On the RS4 Pro, the transmitter attaches to the bottom of the gimbal, just like the Raveneye would but the transmitter transmits to either the DJI standalone receivers or the DJI monitor. You can use this monitor to control your camera, even with some Sony cameras, there's a virtual widget that you can dig through your menus. Um, that's probably a whole video on its own. The transmitter can transmit a signal up to seven kilometers away, and it gives you access to the full gimbal control and focus motor adjustments. And with the LiDAR, you can see the LiDAR view and the LiDAR waveform, which makes things very easy when it comes to uh, focusing. You can see exactly in a distance plane where your subject is. If you're using all of these things together, the ecosystem really comes together when you have the DJI transmission and the Hybrite monitor. With the Hybrite monitor and the handles, you could be down the street and still be getting a live feed of your camera and be able to adjust focus and use all of those LiDAR tools as well. I couldn't adjust focus when I was using the Raveneye for that short film, so I had to get out of the car and literally adjust focus on the camera. The Hybrite monitor can also send a signal to a director's monitor as well. Um, this is an additional purchase, just like the handles are. But if you get this expansion plate, you can export a clean SDI or HDMI out, as well as DC power the monitor as well. Bringing all this together with the LiDAR, the transmission, and the Focus Pro motors is the transmission cable hub. You can use all of this together at once and get a feed to the Hybrite monitor with all of that LiDAR data, and you can adjust all of the settings in the LiDAR on the motor itself. This transmission hub unlocks all that capability 
and you can use it without the RS4 Pro itself too. More on that in another video, but this setup unlocks the full potential of all of this ecosystem working together. The improvements to the RS4 Pro make it a great upgrade if you're using manual lenses, especially if you're using the LiDAR and image transmission system. Even if you're using an autofocus lens with a strong autofocus camera body, the stronger motors and the zoom option, the really small quality of life updates are really nice overall in the RS4 Pro. The real benefits start when you start using the Focus Pro motors and you're using a wireless follow focus with the RS4 Pro. It's great to have an option for a first AC if you will be operating the gimbal. They can be adjusting focus, iris, and zoom while you're focusing on just operating the gimbal and keeping things steady. Breaking some of these duties into something that a first AC is really familiar with is going to be something that I'm very interested in the future. This is what I've discovered using the RS4 Pro over the past few weeks. There is so much more to cover with this gimbal. I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Uh, I have a lot of things that I learned about this, so I'll be releasing a tips and shortcuts video soon that goes over the details of what I learned using this gimbal and the accessories over the past few weeks. So be sure to subscribe and check back for that video soon. What do you guys think of the RS4 Pro? Let me know in the comments down below, and thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.